right, so I just want to record part of this just in case someone else has a has a question later on. So I'm going to put the little one up on my shoulder here. She's not too happy, but it's okay. So Daisy, um, this is actually a review from kind of where we left off right at the very, very end of the school year or very end of our time together. We were talking about slope, specifically the slope formula. And anytime uh, we use this, it's to find the slope is to find the steepness between any two points on a graph. We can use it on uh, straight line graphs. We can use it on uh, um, graphs where they're kind of all over the place. But the, what we do is when we look at the line, we choose any two points and the example that you're given right here where it says the rate of change and there's like one is x is labeled x1 y1 the others x2 y2 the order of those two doesn't matter it just happens that uh we get my little annotation tools here it just happens that this lower one is x1 and the higher one is 0.2 the order of those two points doesn't matter. But what does matter is when I choose saying like one point is going to be point one, the other one is going to be point two. What matters is how I plug the coordinates into, into the formula. So since the bottom one is labeled as point one and the top one is point two, when it goes into the slope formula, take the y coordinates subtract those and divide that by the x coordinates. So since x2, y2 is the top one, say that, the, say that this x2, y2 point, say that that one is, the point is like five, six. And that this one is point two, three. I would take my six, is my y2, three is y1, and then my x's would be five and two. Again, it doesn't matter, like I could have made the lower point, I could have had that be my point one, and I had the upper one be point two, or I could switch that. But what's important is that I match up my x and, y, my x and y's, my x's and my y's. So since five, six is 0.2, the y coordinate of six, I'm gonna subtract six minus the y coordinate from 0.1. But then underneath, I have to do the same thing, but with the x's, I have to take the same x coordinate and subtract the same x coordinate from the lower one. So I can, I can do this as six minus three over five minus two, or, three minus six over two minus five. See how my, my six and my five are together. They're like one right over the other. Same with my three and two, they're in the same order. I can switch that. I can do instead of six minus three, I could do three minus six. But if I change the orders of my point one and point two, I have to make sure that I do the same thing underneath in the denominator. Does that make a little bit more sense now? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna clear this out. Right here. So remember, like we always wanna simplify our answer. And like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a straight line graph or I can use this same formula to find the slope of uh, from between like this first point here on, on these graphs, I can use it to find the rate of change between any of the points on those graphs. But for us, we're mainly going to be using it 
for straight line graphs, as well as we're going to be pulling out information from tables looking for like looking for trends. So, yes. so hold on for one second. My wife is going to take my little one so that I have both hands. So, so in example one here, and this is the same one that we see in uh, when you're watching the video. I have po my point one is thirteen eight. My next point is. 312. So the steps that we follow label our coordinates as being x1, y1, x2, y2. For this step, you don't actually always have to put x1, y1, but I want you to know that so like 13, 8 is point 0.1. But so this is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2. So once we do that, we put those coordinates, we put those numbers into our slope formula. And anytime we're dealing with slope, anytime you see that, you're going to see, uh, especially when we get into working with our y, the y-intercept and the y-intercept formula, the variable for slope is always going to be this little lowercase m. So if you see a formula that's like something, something m times whatever, you know that the m stands for the slope or the steepness of the line. Now, just enough, I go back to back a couple of lessons where we talk about the four different types of slope. We have positive, negative, zero, and what's the last one? Even, I guess. No, undefined. Undefined, good job. Yes, yeah, so remember a zero slope is a flat line. And then undefined is the uh, straight is up, straight up and down, yeah. vertical. All every, everything that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about is going to be one of those four kinds of slope. Most of the time, like I'm gonna say, like between eighty and ninety percent, it's either going to be positive or negative slope. There are gonna be a few times where you're gonna see something that has m is going to equal zero. You're gonna see a couple times where m is going to be undefined, and when that happened, it's because there's a zero in the denominator getting a little ahead of myself. So our steps, we label our coordinates, mm -hmm. point one, point two, and then we put those coordinates into the slope formula, and then we solve and simplify. So what I've done here, I'm gonna move this out of the way just a little bit. So I've labeled negative 13, eight as being point one. So negative 13 is x1, eight is y1. And then for point two, which is 312, three is x2, 12 is y2. And I'm doing this, doing it this way because I want you to see where those numbers are going to match up. So we, I labeled my coordinates. And then I put those numbers into our slope formula. So since 12 is y2 and 8 is y1, in my numerator, I have... 12 minus 8 divided by x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is negative 13. And since I have 3 minus negative 13, uh, daily, if I were to say keep change change, what do I mean by keep change change? You're going to keep the first number, then change the next two. I'm going to keep my first number. So in 3 minus negative 13, what am I keeping? You're keeping the 3. I'm going to keep the 3. I'm going to change, and then I'm going to change two more things. You're going to change it to a plus and a plus. Mm -hmm. So instead of 3 minus negative 13, I keep my 3, change this minus to a change that from subtraction to addition. And then I change this negative 13 to a positive 13 because subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So three minus negative 13 becomes three plus 13, which is 16. So I solved 12 minus eight is four, three plus 13 is 16. So I'm left with four over 16. Justin, am I done? 
Uh, uh-uh. You're going to solve 4 over 16. Yes. So 4 over 16 is a, fra it is a fraction. It's a proper mm -hmm. fraction, but it hasn't been simplified. That's our last step. So 4 over 16 can simplify to what fraction? Uh, decimal? It can simplify to a decimal, but I want to I want to keep it in a, keep it in fraction because remember in lesson two we talked about slope being rise over run. The four represents our rise. That's how far up and down we're going to go, and then sixteen is our run. But I can say this in a simpler form. How many times can like what numbers can I multiply together to get four? Oops. And I just gave you, I just gave you a, uh, a preview. So what are the multiples of four numbers that I can multiply together? Mm. Wait, what do you mean? So what, like the, the numbers that I can multiply together to get the number four. So we always start with <laughs> one and four, but what other numbers can I multiply together to get four? Can I multiply two by anything to get four? Two times two. Two. Times two. two times two. So I got one, two, and four. Those are the those are multiplies. I can't multiply three by anything. So then I and I already got back to four. So my my multiples, my common multiples, one, two, and four. Now for sixteen, what numbers can I multiply together to get sixteen? Can I multiply one by anything? Uh, one times 16 or 16 times one? One times 16. Can I multiply two times anything to get me 16? Mm. Two times eight. Two times eight. What about three? Three. No. Uh, mm -mm. no. You could do no. four. I can do four because it's four times what? Four times four. Four times four. Um, I can't multiply five. I can't multiply six. I can't multiply seven. But then I know that two times eight and then one times 16. So uh -huh. those are all the multiples of 16. Now, if I look at my two lists, what's the largest number that they both have in common? Two. They have, they have one in common, they have two in common. Oh yeah, four. They have four in common, which means that I can divide my numerator and my denominator by four. So four divided by four gives me what? Four, wait, one. Four, yeah, correct. Four divided by four is one. What about 16 divided by four? Four. Correct. Because you said you even said four times four is sixteen. Sixteen divided by four is four. So my simplified answer is one over four. Make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You, want, you want to try another one? Sure. <laughs> I love that vote of confidence. <laughs> nice. So example, for example two, I left, the, I left the steps up. So I'm gonna label my coordinates and I'm gonna just very quickly, I'm going to put, I'm gonna have this to be point one and this side will be point two. So when I label my coordinates x1, y1, 19, the number 19 here, is that going to be x1 or is that going to be y1? Uh, x1 and then tw negative 12 is y1. So then yeah. easy for the for for 5 comma 16 or coordinate point 0.516 is 5 x2 or is it y2? X. 
<laughs> I heard a whisper. Uh, that was not me. <laughs> so five is X2, which means that 16 is going to be what? It will be a Y2. Y2. And remember, when we are, when we're labeling coordinates, the X coordinate is always going to come first. It's always going to be X, then Y. Because think about it, in the alphabet, which comes first, X or Y? Uh, y goes first. X, Y, Z? Mm -mm. Uh, uh, X, Y, Z. And when we're, when we're graphing, we always, we go along the X axis first. Kind of like when you're, when you're waking up in the morning, you start out horizontal. At least if you lay on a bed or a floor like me, you start out horizontal and then you go vertical. So we do our X coordinate first, then our Y coordinate. It shows us how far left or right, and then how far up and down. So we have our coordinates labeled. Let's see if this is going to be, so we got X1, Y1. 19 is X1, negative 12 is Y1. Five is X2, 16 is Y2. Now, could I switch these and make 516.1? Could yeah. I? Do, I could do that. But it kind of makes sense to leave these as one and two since in, in the order that they're given. So I'm going to put those into my slope formula. So in my numerator, my y2 my, minus y1 is going to be what number minus what number? So since on the, on the top, so it says we, we put it in the slope formula, it starts first as y2 minus y1. For the numbers that we're given, which number is y2 and which number is y1? 16, I think that says. 16, and then what's y1? Negative 12. All right, so then we're going to divide that by x2 minus x1. And in the numbers we're given, which one is x2? Five. And then which one's x1? 19. 19. 19. You guys are awesome. So it's going to look like this. 16 minus negative 12 divided by 5 minus 19. So then, Justin, I asked Daisy this question last time, so I'm going to ask you now. When I say keep change, change. In you, keep, you keep 16 and change negative 12. To what? To, uh, I don't know. You know. Keep change, change. So we keep, we keep 16. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna make this, yes. So we keep 16 the way it is. We're gonna change our subtraction to addition. And then we change negative 12 to positive 12 okay. because Subtracting a negative is the same as adding its positive. So 16 minus 12 minus negative 12 is the same as 16 plus 12. And then 15 minus 19, I'm just going to keep that as is. But what do you see about the numbers 15 and 19? Which one's bigger? Mm, 19. 19. So then can I subtract... Can I take 19 away from five? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. How can I do that? Oof. Daisy, you're the smart one. You got this. I don't know. <laughs> what? Wait. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to our silly songs. Same signs, add and keep different signs. Repeat. Same signs, add and keep different signs. So you're going to keep the negative? Or same, same signs, add and keep different signs, subtract. Keep the sign of the bigger number, then you'll be okay. exact. Good job. So I can't normally can't do 15 minus 19. What I can do, I'm going to subtract, I'm going to keep the sign of the bigger number, 
So since negative 19 is bigger, I know my answer is going to be negative. I'm just going to subtract 19 minus 5. And what's 19, what's 19 minus 5? Um, 14. Yes, and since 19 is bigger, I know my answer is going to be a negative 14. So yeah. go back to this. So I've got 16 plus 12, which is 28, over negative 14. Am I done? No. So I need to simplify this. What's the biggest number that can go into both 14 and 28? It's 25. I mean, the way, no. Uh, 11. 11 times what will give you 14? Oh, three. 11 times three? Mm. Or Wait. two. Oh. Wait, what are we multiplying to? We're looking, for the, we're looking for the multiples that will give us 14 and 28, the biggest one that they have in common. Uh, seven times two makes 14. Correct. And can seven times what will give you 28? Seven times, uh... I'm gonna go back one real quick. So I'm going to show you how we get to get to that. So you said seven times two will give you fourteen. Four so times seven can make twenty-eight. Four times seven. So I'm left with. So if I divide both by seven, I get four over negative two. Well, how many times can two go into four? Two times two times. And since I have a negative in my denominator, that makes the whole answer negative. Now, Daisy, if this was negative 28 over positive 14, would my answer still be negative? Yeah. It would. Because if one, like, it's the same thing with multiplication. If you have if you're multiplying two numbers and one of them is positive, one of them is negative, your answer is always going to be negative. If these were both negative, if it was negative 28 divided by negative 14, our answer would be positive. But since we have a negative in, on, in one of those, in either the numerator or the denominator, it makes the whole answer negative. So two goes into four twice, just like Justin said, and since it is a negative two. My whole answer, my final simplified answer is negative two. Oh. So I have a feeling I got three wrong. You have a feeling you got three wrong? Yeah. That's okay. That's, that's why we're doing this. So, you want me to tell you the answer I got for three? Let me see. Well, you know what I can do right now, actually? I can... Stop sharing this, and I can actually pull up the. Uh, I think I have it up on one of these other pages. <clears throat> yeah, I'll pull pull this up right here. So go back to my sharing. Share. Which one is it? Slope formula practice. Is this what you're looking at? Yep. Yeah. So for, and I, I and I took the ones that I did in the video and the ones that I did just for you guys and put that right in there as examples. So for number three, I ask you guys to just choose either the odds or the evens to complete. It really does. It really doesn't matter to me. Wait, we gotta choose which one to do. Yeah, you can do either. Oh, I did all of them. Bruh. Well, then you get the award for doing 
more than you're supposed to. I didn't even read it. I just did it. <laughs> oh, so you just do one? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. I don't... I, I, yeah. So, yeah. So, you find the slope of line between any two points. Choose either the odds or the evens to, com to, com to complete. If we were in class, I'd be like, you guys are smart enough. Just do all of them. But I also know that, like, trying to type all of these things in, especially, Daisy, if you're working, like, doing most of your work off of your phone, it's not the easiest to type in. So... Yeah. You had said earlier about turning in the work and trying to get it. Um, do you prefer to do your work on like on paper? Yes. Right. Oh my god. Okay. How would you? Why do you want to do it on paper? That's like, cool. That's fine. That's fine. This is like that's that's why I wanted. That's really why I wanted to talk to you about this. All of these assignments, you can do them on a piece of paper. Take a picture of it, and you can add that picture to like and and turn that turn that in or take a picture email that picture to me and say mr Hubner, this is for uh slope lesson number three here's my here's my answers here's my work because that's really what i want to see like do i want you to get the correct answer absolutely but more important to me than that is i want to see your steps i want to know that you know how to do this so Take a picture of everything that you've done, send that, send that to me. And I can I can plug in all the all the grades in Google Classroom from there too. Okay. All right. Do you, Daisy, do you have my Google Voice number? Because you can take a picture and text it to me that way as well. Google Voice? What is that? Google Voice, it's a, a number that I have set up. It goes right to my phone. Um, I'm able to like so like if you're if you're struggling with something like and you're in the middle of you can either email me or if you I download that no you can like it's it's a number that like I'll I'll give you the number right now just to make sure that you have it so where's my okay. chat room yeah so if you yeah you can text this number two four three eight thirty if you yeah I put it in in the chat box if you text that number like that comes right to my phone and I can see and be like, Oh, Daisy. Oh, you, this is, I see that you got step one and step two and step three. Correct. But step four, you might've, there, there might, might be shaky on. So that's just one more way that you can like reach out and say like, I'm, I don't really, Mr. I really don't understand this. And if you're saying, but when you're doing that, if you tell me specifically like that you don't understand part one or understand this step, that helps me be able to help you better. Make sense? Yeah. So you prefer to do things on paper? Like there are like a few other students in our class that prefer to do that as well. Justin, you really like typing things in. You like working on like the slides and that's, that's opposite. That's awesome. That's why I'm doing this, why I have options of how to do your work and how to submit it because the most important thing to me is seeing that you know the steps and that you're able to use those steps mm. lots of options i like computer better because i know my handwriting got a lot worse now <laughs> and that and that's fine my handwriting is really bad too but i also know that there's some things it's easier to just write some things down than to try and type them out, try and figure out, like for instance, putting, putting my like X1, Y1 in here, like I had to like look up how to do subscript and it's like a couple extra keystrokes, but um, mm. sometimes it's easier to just write things out. And that's fine. Yeah, that's true. I have to go on another Zoom call. Yes, but Daisy, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for coming today. I'm gonna stop recording this part so in case anybody else is watching this in the future and needs some help we got you all right daisy okay. justin thank, thank you. you thank you thank you